what I want to look at is the process of getting data from my scanner into scene and then exported to another project or to another program. There are a couple of ways you can do this. The easiest of which is to open scene, put the SD card in and have the uh, prompt come up to import the data from the SD card and have it show up in our project tree. That's the easiest way to do it. That's how most people will do it. Uh, and that's gonna be typically what you see. Uh, but let's say, for example, that's not an option. We've already copied the data from the SD card to the computer, or we got it from another source, or uh, something happened and we don't have that option to plug it in. There are two ways we can do this. One is to simply open the project file. So if I go to File, Open, Locate the LSPROJ file, I can open that entire project. So if I got this from another source, this would be how I would do it. Another way we could do this is to say we don't even have that. All we have are the FLS files. So what I want to do is delete what I've already created here. And inside of scene, I'm going to manually create my own project starting from scratch and import the data. So from the file menu, we'll create a new project and I'm going to call it project cycle because ultimately that's what we're doing here is going through the project cycle inside of scene. So I will put it in my data folder, call it project cycle using underscores, not spaces. I never use spaces with Faro scanners or with Faro scene. Using my Windows browser, I'm going to go locate the FLS files that I want. I'm going to select all of the files that I want and drag and drop them into my project tree. The first thing I always, always, always do is save this. The same thing when I import data from the card or open a project that somebody has done, I save it. Scene creates history points that I can revert back to at any time. Now it's been successfully saved, we'll hit OK and we'll continue on to the next step. The first thing I want to do is load these. I want to take all of the raw data and load it into scene so that I can begin working on it. There are a couple of ways I can do this. One is to do it all at once and actually multiple steps at once. So scans, operation, pre-process will allow me to load the data, apply pictures and do other things at the same time. I like to have a little bit more control, so I'm going to right click on these and tell it to load the data for scan one, and then I'm going to double click on that and look at what's there. I can proceed to the next one and so on and so forth. If I want to speed this up, I can right click on the scans folder and tell it to load all scans, and now all of these will be loaded and be made ready to use. You'll notice there's a green box that's placed to the left of the scan that tells me that it is loaded. I do go into each of these and check and make sure there's some data there. The last thing I want to do is start registering and realize, hey, we don't have any scan data. We wasted all this time. So I'll check them. I notice that they're grayscale only. My next thing is to apply the pictures. Same thing here as before, I can do this all at once or I can go individually. So we'll right click operations, color and apply pictures and we can do this for each individual scan. There's also an option to do it for all at the same time. I wait and allow it to apply the photographs and what's happening here is we're taking every measurement that was collected from the scanner, matching it to a pixel in an image, which is giving me full colorization. So we did that for the first one. And if you notice, there's a star on the cloud now that tells me the photo has been applied. So we'll move on to the next one and so on. Or we can right click on the scan folder, operations, color pictures and apply to all of the scans at once instead of doing each individually. This is user preference. Uh, the, the end results are going to be the same no matter how you do this. As long as you do these steps and check the data as you go, as our uh, former president once said, check but verify, we want to make sure everything's right as we go. So I'm going to go to Scan World 3 and verify that we have uh, pictures and uh, make sure everything's good before we move on. Once I verified all of these, the next thing I want to do is save this. 
And up to this point, what I've done is I've loaded them and applied the color. So that's what I'm going to call that particular save. It's successfully saved to revision number two. We'll click OK and proceed to the next step. Now, for what we're about to do, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, my way may not be the best way for you, but this is one way to get through this. One thing we can do is we can look at the scans individually before we get into the registration just to see how well they line up as they sit. Maybe we had the GPS and uh, compass feature turned on. From the view menu, we'll tell it to view a correspondence view, and this shows me each of the individual scans, each with a different color, so I can determine or differentiate one to another. What I can do in this screen is click on any of the scans. Using the minus button on my keyboard, I can shrink my little wheel here, and I can begin to move and rotate these into the correct horizontal location. I don't have to be exact because I'm going to rely on the registration to handle the rest of this. This is a way for me to roughly get these scan worlds in their correct position. If I can't see the one I want from the screen here, I can select it from the project tree or I can reduce and zoom in out until I get what I want. Again, to make the wheel or the uh, uh, the, the gripper, however you want to call it, smaller. I use the minus key on the keyboard, and now I can move and rotate this scan into place, making sure that the three align before I move into my registration process or before I move any further in the registration process. All I'm looking for here is a rough alignment. Once I have it, I'll close the correspondence view, and on the scan folder, right-click, operations, registration, place scans. You have your three options. We're going to do the top view because we have no targets. I want to adjust my subsampling because we're outside towards high, and I'd like to keep the reliability in the middle of the slider bar. I let it process and tie these together and wait for the scan manager. The scan manager comes up, and I'm given my street light showing me green, yellow, or red telling me how close they are. And now I can go in and look at the mean scan point tensions. Now I want to look at mathematically or numerically how close did what I do so far fit together. I'm looking for a value of 0 0.03 or better. Even though these are better than that 0 0.03, I still have a yellow light, not the green light that I'm after. So what I want to do is look at the scan point tension tab. That's kind of the next uh, step in what I look at to determine why it's not green. And what I'm looking at is the overall mean average, which is 0 0.05. That's above my 0 0.03. And the percentage of overlapping data that's used within my tolerance is only 17%. I like to see that number 50% or better. So we didn't meet our tolerance, but we may be okay to tighten this up using a cloud to cloud, which will actually use all of the points instead of just the, uh, the structure data, my vertical features, walls, and columns and things. So we'll hit OK on this window and move into the cloud to cloud. We can right click on our scan manager and tell it to update scans. This time we change our method to cloud to cloud. We want to adjust the subsampling level. Again, we're outside, so we'll probably take that slider bar and move it closer to high as opposed to uh, low, looking somewhere around a quarter of a foot. The maximum number of iterations will be 30. There's no reason for it to try any more than 30 times. And the search distance will be half a foot. Uh, within half a foot of each other should be adequate. We'll hit OK, and again, we'll wait for the scan manager, which we noticed this time is green. That's what I want to see. I want to see that we're having some good results. We can actually look at the results and see the mean target and mean scan point tensions now, all below that 0 0.03 value we're after. And if we go to the scan point tensions, the overall mean 0 0.0036, well below that. And now we have 84.7% of that data being used, 84.7% of the overlapping data. That's good. That's what I want to see. 
I don't want to take any chances of anything bad happening to my registration or me losing it. So the first thing I want to do is right click on the scan manager and lock it. Once the scan manager is locked, I want to save this store point as a registration point so I can revert back to this if I need to. Once it's saved, there are different directions we can go. We can look at different things. What I want to do is go ahead and create scan point cloud for all of this data. I'm not going to homogenize or do anything to it. Just use the defaults to create the scan point clouds. And the reason for this is I want to be able to go in and take a cross section of all of those and look at how well these scan worlds lined up with my registration. I do not have to do this step, but it is recommended to help you avoid getting 10 minutes down the road or even further down the road and realizing that, hey, even though my numbers were good, something was off in the registration and now I've got to go back and start over. I'd rather find that now and deal with it now then deal with it later. So once I've done those, I'm going to right click on the scan folder and view the correspondence view again. I like the correspondence view because it shows each scan world in a separate color. That's always a good thing. Then what I want to do is apply a clipping box. So in my toolbar, I will grab a clipping box. And I'll have to slide my toolbar out a little bit because my uh, resolution is not quite adequate for this. So I'll adjust some things around and I'll hit create a new clipping box. That puts a clipping box on my uh, data so I can begin to analyze only what I want to see. I can change the rotation, I can change the size uh, and shape of everything that's here uh, just by clicking on the clipping box and sliding the uh, arrows in and out and adjusting the rotation. What I want to get here essentially is a cross section of my data. So I'm going to make my clipping box kind of thin so that I can go in and look at a section of the data to see how well this matches up. And I can move the clipping box when I'm done to other places and look at other locations, but this will at least get me started. So I can see red data, green data, and blue data. So three different scans coming together here. And looking at the side view here, I can see that that lines up very well on the pavement section. So what I'll do is go farther away from the scanner positions and look at a vertical piece, in this case a wall, to see how well the vertical data lines up. I don't see anything that would raise uh, concern or be alarming. The data looks like it lines up very well to me. So I feel comfortable at this point saying my registration is good. So I'll close the correspondence view and move on to my next step. If I wanted, I could delete the clipping box, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it. What I want to create now is a project point cloud. This essentially is unifying the, uh, the point data and giving me the ability to treat it as one point cloud instead of individual scan worlds. It's going to ask me to save it, which of course I did. And then I'll adjust my settings. I'm going to tell it to eliminate duplicate points. We did three scans in a small area, so we have overlapping data, which means duplicate points. We're going to remove some of those duplicate points. We're going to homogenize the density, making it more consistent throughout. And we're going to apply color balancing. So if I have scans where I have two different lighting conditions, we will have a better balance of those colors. Once it's finished, it's going to pop up and show me how long it took to complete the point cloud. So this took a minute and two seconds. We hit OK. And now if you notice, the scans are all unloaded. Now we're ready to start working with the 3D view. So view, 3D view, and we see all of our scans, except for we left our clipping box on, so we're actually seeing our clipping box. But we can work with our clipping box uh, and do a few key functions with the clipping box. Let's say, for example, I want to remove data. Once I get the view oriented the way I want, uh, using any of the rotation tools, I can adjust the, uh, the clipping box to cut out as much as I want to see or don't want to see. In this case, I'll go to the base of the trunk of the trees because I want to cut the trees out. So what we can do is in the tools, we can select a point cloud polygon and window around the data that we want to get rid of 
double click to close. Clicking outside of the clipping box, we can right click and say delete. So that data is now removed. Along the same lines, with our clipping box isolating just what we want to see, we could highlight an area to be exported. So if I want this entire building section here, I repeat the same thing, adjust my clipping box. And then from the tools menu, I can do the polygon, the point cloud polygon selection, window around the area, and then right click telling it to export the 3D selection. Now only what I selected is what will be exported. I can go in various formats including PTS and E57 depending on what the project or what the program I'm using goes to. I'll delete my clipping box because I really no longer need it here. And like I did with the the clipping box area, I could now use that same selection function to window around all of the data and simply do that same right click export and do the 3D selection, picking the format again that is recognized by the program I'm using. There are many ways to do this. This is a simple start to finish that I use regularly.